How to take money from the rich. Oh, yeah, that's the goal, right? That's the goal. I've heard this over and over again, that we have to take money from the rich. You know, this uh, Million Student March leader was interviewed by Neil Cavuto on Fox Business, and she explained it right there. She said the the wealthiest 1% are hoarding all the money, and that's why students have student debt. I know it makes total sense, right? So I thought I would record a piece here, how to take money from the rich, because it turns out I'm pretty damn good at taking money from the rich. And I want to share with you how I do this, how I accomplish this, because there are really only two ways to do it. Uh, think about it. How do, you, how do you take money from rich people? Well, method number one, which is what the extreme left prefers to do, is to take it by coercion. They want to raise taxes on the rich, take the money by force. In other words, non-voluntarily. They want to have protests and they want to scream and shout and be cry bullies. And by being powerful enough cry bullies, they can maybe get enough free stuff. They, they make demands like extortionists and, and like ransom notes. We demand $8 million from Yale. You know, we demand $10 million from Harvard. We demand this and demand that. And they, they threaten, you know, they threaten, well, the, the Mizzou football team won't take the field, won't play football if you don't meet our demands. So th these are extortionists. And they demand to take money from the rich because in their minds, the rich are people who are living in mansions with floors overflowing with bags of unused money. They're literally sitting, these fat cats are sitting on bags of money. They have like money bag couches, money bag bean chairs, uh, money bag beds. Their entire, their mattresses are made literally out of cash stuffed into a cloth holder. That's their mattress. They sleep on money. They wipe their butts with money toilet paper. They just have so much money that they're not using that we have to take it from them, right? So this, this girl who was the leader of the Million Student March movement, she was interviewed by Neil Cavuto, and she said, we got to raise taxes to 90%, 90%. That's how we're going to have social justice in America. So you raise taxes to 90%, you're taking money by force from those who have earned it. Let's say anyone over a quarter of a million dollars a year in income, you got to pay 90% tax because these people want your money. They're demanding your money. And in fact, you are the problem because you've been hoarding the cash. Now, here's the reality of the situation. What I've come to discover, and this is what has made me so good at taking money from the rich. Now, this is my secret that I'm going to share with you. Is that rich people actually don't hold on to their money. Imagine that. It turns out rich people use their money. They spend it like crazy and they invest it like crazy. They invest it in business ideas and business ventures that have to hire people. So they create jobs. They invested in R&D projects for innovation to create new technologies and breakthroughs that create more jobs and in new industries. And they invested in, in banks, which loan money out to people. They, they invested in real estate to build more buildings or more homes so more people have more options of different places to live or business real estate to rent and so on. Even when they have luxury jets, they have to hire people to maintain those jets. They have to hire uh, avionics companies to install the avionics. So there's rich people are spending money like mad. No one spends money like rich people. And it turns out amazing, like you almost wouldn't believe this, the more money they have, the more they spend or invest or or put into other projects. So rich people, I found, are not sitting on bags of money. What they're actually doing is they're functioning as conduits for money. Money passes through them and they have command over large amounts of money, but they're spending it like crazy. So then how do you take money from the rich? Well, here's how it's done. You simply provide a product or service that they want to spend money on. Imagine that. You don't even have to put a gun to their head. You don't have to get the government to take the money for you. You don't have to march and protest and be a bunch of cry bullies. You don't have to run around faking attacks on your group. Oh, the car hit me. No, it didn't. Oh, the KKK is running around camp. No, no they aren't. 
Oh, the, 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 the student center sign was defaced. No, that was Photoshop. So you don't have to make all these things up. You don't have to play the victim. All you really got to do is create something of value in society and find rich people who want to purchase it. And rich people, because they have so much money at their command, they're buying things all the time. And this is my secret. I take money from rich people all the time, and then I hire local people to do the jobs to fulfill the product or service that I've promised the rich people. I, for example, I run an online store selling laboratory-validated superfoods. Uh, by laboratory validated, I mean we we have a, a very high end lab that checks foods for heavy metals contamination and others other contaminants, <clears throat> and we uh, we we market very high end superfoods and nutritional supplements, and not all the customers are rich, of course, most of them aren't, but some of them are, and some some days we get orders for a thousand dollars at a time. Someone just just orders a thousand dollars worth of stuff, must be rich, right? So we take their money voluntarily. Actually, they give their money. They offer the money. We accept it. And then we hire people. We use that money to hire people to fulfill their order and ship it out so that they get what they were promised. Imagine that. It's called free enterprise. It's called a voluntary system of abundance and and, and the free market. The political left does not understand how free markets work. The fascists, the, the communists, the, the leftists, the extreme leftists, these student groups, these protesters who are fascists, they believe that the only way that they can get anything in life is through extortion and demands and false flag attacks on themselves that they faked, they fabricated, and by essentially threatening, intimidating, and extorting everyone else. They practice the intolerance that they claim to resent. They are the bullies. They are the racists. They make racist demands like, oh, the university has to fire white faculty at, to hire black faculty. Oh, the university has to increase admissions of black students, which, of course, can only be accomplished by decreasing admissions of, of white students. They want universities to judge people by the color of their skin. They are the racists. And... Yet, there is no institutionalized racism across America's campuses anywhere other than what they fabricate against themselves. There might be isolated incidents of crazy, drunk asshats uh, shouting mean words, but that's not institutional racism. It, does, it simply doesn't exist. So really, if it, when, when you get down to it, there are, again, two ways to take money from rich people. You can do it by coercion, threats, uh, the threat of violence or the government threatening to take it from them via taxation. That's method number one. Or you can get their money voluntarily by creating a product or a service that they find valuable and engaging in a voluntary exchange where you provide the product or service, they provide the money. You get the money from them, they have a smile on their face, and you have a smile on your face. And if you do this enough times, and if you do this well enough, and if you do this with dedication and hard work, you too can become a person who is rich. And when you do, if you make, I don't know, let's say a million dollars in a year, you're going to, th first of all, if you make a million dollars, you're not even going to think you're rich because you, you might have $3 million in debt. <laughs> By the way, there's <laughs> cash flow is a bitch, as they say. But if you make a million dollars, I guarantee you, you're not going to sit on it in your bed. You're not going to sit on big bags of cash in your house. Besides, a million dollars isn't really that big of a bag of cash, by the way, if it's in hundreds. Um, but you will reinvest that money because you want a return on your investment. So you too will become a conduit of money that's being invested to create more jobs, to create more innovations, to perhaps build more real estate, to develop ideas, you will put that money to use somewhere else where it's creating more job opportunities for other people. But the, the left, the radical fascist left, wants, wants it to work like this. If you make a million dollars, they come and take $900,000, leaving you with only a hundred K. What do they do with the 900000 They give it out to their friends and buddies and waste a lot of it on bureaucracy. 
and you have no control over where that goes. You're left with 100K. You can probably barely pay your bills with 100K. You know, you're, you're, cause you might live in a nice house. You might drive a nice car. 100K won't get you very far if you're trying to live a rich person lifestyle. But this is what the left wants. It's really to punish you for earning a million dollars. How dare you out earn them? How dare you make something of yourself? You're showing them up. And that's what they hate the most. They hate people who succeed because they don't want anyone to prove that it's possible to to succeed in America, even if you have dark skin, because there are a lot of black millionaires in America today, and most of them made all that money themselves from scratch. And they do not want those examples out there to disprove their assertion that America keeps every black person down. It simply isn't true. There are black millionaires all over this country. There are Chinese millionaires. There are Latino millionaires. And there are white millionaires, too. And, of course, most of the billionaires happen to be white. But that's going to change, too, over time. It's going to change at least if people will work hard and create innovation and move in the right direction. We'll have black billionaires, too. And I welcome that. And I think any honest person in America does welcome that. We welcome abundance. We welcome success. We welcome achievement and the ability to overcome adversity. Whereas in our universities today, all they're training people to do is to learn how to be a victim, learn how to play the victim. They don't teach them economics. They don't understand where money comes from or how debt is created or how debt is used in an economy. They don't understand any of that. All they know is they want to take your money because you worked hard for it and did some something innovative or, or saved money over a long period of time, you worked hard and saved money, therefore you shall be punished. The government will come take up to 90% of your money. Thank you very much. So that's the difference. And that's my explanation of how you take money from the rich. Thanks for listening. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger for TalkNetwork.com.